protons and their compounds. So up till now, we've learned about protons, neutrons, and electrons and their respective charges, correct? We know that protons are describing the identity of your atom. This number will not change. We know that if we change the number of neutrons, that is what happens when we have isotopes. And then up until now, all of our protons and electrons have been neutral, right? They've, well, we've gotten a neutral charge. So we're going to learn about what's called an ion. An ion is a charged particle. And the only way to get a charged particle is to change the number of electrons. Okay? You change the number of electrons, you create what's called an ion. Now, let's think about this. You can either have a positive or a negative ion. A cation is a positively charged ion. Okay, you guys talking in the back. I'm recording again. So. And I remember cation as the T in cat looks like a plus sign, right? So any charged particle that has a positive charge can be called an ion. It has a plus one, plus two, plus three, and so on. Anions are your negatively charged particles. And I remember this because the N and the anion looks like negative, right? So I know those two. Now, where does this come into play? Well, we need to figure out how ions are created. They're either created by losing electrons or gaining. So in your notes, Go down to where it says counting isotopes and ions. It looks like a grid just like the one we've already done. Does Grandpa say they only lose or gain one? No, they can lose um, They can lose more or they gain more. Yeah, and we'll figure out how to determine that. Now, let's look at something real quick. If I have five protons, and visually five plus signs, right? and five electrons, what would my overall charge be? It's, it's, don't overthink it. What would it be? Zero. Five positive and five negative, what's my overall charge? It'd be zero, right? And we would call that neutral, correct? Okay, let's say that I had three positive and five negative. So three positive charges, five negative charges. What would be my overall negative charge? Two. Negative two, right? Or two negative, it doesn't matter. Makes sense? Let's say that I have five positive and two negative. Three positive. You would have a three positive charge, right? This is the same kind of thinking you need to determine when determining what charge your ion has. Okay. You're gonna look at your... You both. Three, the oh, three sorry. Okay. Um, you are going to look at how many positive protons you have, how many negative electrons, to determine whether you have a charge or if your atom is neutral. So on this little part here, very similar to the chart we filled out on the first half of notes, let's take into account um, our charge, okay? Calcium 40, what's the symbol for calcium? CA. All this stuff is pretty much the same. Same thing as on the top. Like pretty much, nine. yeah. We're going to change the number of electrons. Now they're no longer neutral. So what's the atomic number for calcium? 20. 20. 20. We got that from the parent table. Okay, um, number of protons is still determined by the atomic number? 20. 20. Our number of electrons, though, we cannot assume that it's neutral now. Because out here, if I have a two plus charge, that means I have two more protons than I have electrons. Well, if I have 20 protons, I have 18 electrons. It's deceiving because a lot of people see the plus two and they want to add two to your protons. But it's kind of opposite. We're really going to be taking away that number from our protons. Now, how do we find the number of neutrons? Well, how do we determine it though? It will be 20, but Subtract we take our mass, mass number, number minus, minus our protons. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now in this problem, they have to do the same. They 
have a new trim. The only difference that this is going to look like when having an ion is we do need to indicate on our nuclear symbol that it's an ion. And we do that by putting a plus two in the upper right corner of our nuclear symbol. So if you see a symbol with a positive or negative charge in the upper right corner, you have an ion. Make sense? I'll just do one more with the bells about to ring. Uh, and then that will get you enough for the fourth worksheet. Before you leave, I have one more handout to give to you. Um, so let's do number 12 real quick, number 12 here. What's given is number of protons, number of electrons, and number of neutrons. So if my number of protons is 16, what does that tell me about my atom? Well, okay, how did you determine that? Yeah, so, so uh, Karen said it's negative two charge because there's two more negative electrons than there are protons. Very good. Now, 16 protons tell me I have what atom? Where do we find? Sulfur. Sulfur? Sure. Okay. So, sulfur. And then that is my atomic number. How do I find my mass number? Um, add your protons and neutrons. Protons, it says 16 plus 16 is? 16. Perfect. Okay. And then the last thing we need to add here, since this is an ion, we need to indicate that on our nuclear symbol. So in the upper right corner, I'm going to put negative 2 or 2 negative. It doesn't matter if you put one first or Real quick, grab this worksheet. You can stop on that. On this worksheet, guys,